Good evening, everyone. Uh, demonstrated interest. Are you interested in learning more about it? Then if so, you have landed in the right spot. My name is Andy Lozier. I'm the Director of Admission Services for College and uh, very happy to be here and especially pleased to be here with my longtime friend and colleague, truly somebody I've known the longest in my 20 years of admission, uh, Jim Bonner, who is the Associate Director of Admission at the University of San Diego. Jim, thank you so much for being here. It's nice to see you. Thank you, Andy. Absolutely. So um, tonight in our, our brief time together, we just want to give um, our students and, and their families a bit of a sense of demonstrated interest. What that is, I think some folks uh, this day and age have a, a fairly strong sense for what that means, but maybe how, how best to um, show it, how not to show it, um, what it means in the college admission process. So uh, Jim, uh, thanks again for your support. And if you can just help answer a couple of these questions. If anything particularly pertains to USD, that would be super helpful as, 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 all, as well, excuse me. Um, to begin, uh, why might a college care about demonstrated interest? Yeah, Andy, that's a great question and a question we get quite a bit uh, from students um, and high school counselors who are going through this process. And it, it comes down to is that college admissions is a competitive uh, activity that it, all students will face as they're going through high school. And when application numbers continue to grow at colleges and universities, it's how are students asking to find the way to stand out amongst their uh, fellow applicants. And so is demonstrated interest one way that colleges will uh, notice me um, if I show up for a college fair or go to the high school visit when the high school rep comes and visits my school in the fall? Do those help? Um, and I think a lot of colleges you'll find will give you different answers, but um, by way of demonstrated interest, whether a school says they do or do not weigh that in an application, I think there is always going to be some consideration, whether it's official or not. Absolutely. That is super helpful. So you, you mentioned, obviously, um, you know, going to see a uh, college campus information session. You mentioned when a rep might come to your high school. Um, how might a student, uh, you know, follow up? So if they're taking an exam, you know, when the rep from their dream school is up there, uh, their particular high school campus to visit. How? What's a good way for the student to follow up even if they couldn't demonstrate that interest in person? Super good question because we recognize that our high school visits when we come to your school in September or October, you could be in an AP class and you can't get out or maybe in the middle of a test uh, or a field trip, anything happens. But we wanna know that you're also still interested. Um, so speaking on behalf of USD, for example, but also I know many other similar schools, it's helpful to know just a simple email that says, hey, you know, I happen to be in class, but I still want to know more about USD or I visited USD last fall or what XYZ college that you're emailing. It's helpful for the rep to know who you are. And once you get in front of them and you, your name is in their head associated with your high school, that could potentially help when they read your application and recognize you uh, as a name and a face to uh, perhaps that application that comes in in the winter. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super helpful. Um, okay. So, so staying on this topic, when, with all the components, you know, involved in the application, essays, transcript, test score, in some cases, uh, letters of rec, where, where does demonstrated interest fall in terms of the weight um, USD would put on that particular uh, component? That's a great question. So for USD specifically, it's not going to be heavily weighted as an admissions factor. Mm -hmm. It is one of many that we will consider, but it's really important to know that demonstrated interest in letting counselors know or college reps know that you are interested in their college. You may be their number one college, mm -hmm. but if you're not academically prepared and competitive within their typical applicant pool, mm -hmm. it may not do much. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind, a lot of schools have a middle 50% GPA range, which you should try to see if your GPA is in line with that college's GPA. Sure. Moments like that, it could bump you up a little bit um, you know, because you're showing your de demonstrated interest. You've shown that you've done the research for the university, that you would be a good fit for this club or this major, and why it would be a good fit for your journey. Mm -hmm. But if you are not within that middle 50% or up higher, all things are great. We are hard to break for those who really want to be here, but are just not academically competitive, and it happens every year. But that's okay because then down the road you learn that there are the transfer route options that if you really are meant to be here and you want to come, a simple decline of admission for first-year students does not necessarily mean a decline for transfer admission down the road. 
Absolutely. That's that's such a great point. And I, I remember those moments myself uh, years ago when I was in college admission. But uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, I could show up, you know, twice a week for six weeks to the University of San Diego. But if I don't have a GPA or test score that's competitive, at least with that middle 50 percent or above, that's that that interest is not going to make a difference. That's correct. Um, and MD, if I might go so far as students are get waitlisted quite a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Waitlisted students now is a different area. Mm -hmm. Now, students who are waitlisted, it could be a couple hundred, it could be a thousand students waitlisted. Every school will be different. But how do students bubble up in the waitlist process is where demonstrated interest could mm -hmm. play a more significant role in rating because as we're trying to figure out if there's room in the class, we also want to find students who, while sort of academically could do well, weren't as high enough to be admitted straight off, but waitlist is an option. And if their spaces open up, typically, and I don't necessarily say typically for every school, but it will help if we know and have a name that comes to mind, like who can we take off the waitlist? Who has shown that interest? That can sometimes help right. to a degree because you don't also want to walk the line where you're being overly aggressive, <laughs> overly pushy and calling three times a week and sending an email every day, which does happen. So, and thank you. You just answered uh, my, my next question is, are there are inappropriate ways uh, to, to demonstrate interest? And it sounds like you have have seen that. Um, we do see that and we tend to see it. Yeah. Don't send an email every day. It's cute that you send an email with a famous quote from somebody every day. Sure. It's definitely <laughs> on our mind. But at some point, are you going to be overly needy and overly aggressive once you're a student and therefore maybe not be a good fit for that particular university? Right. So you have to think about it on that side as well. Absolutely. Well, Jim, this has been so incredibly helpful. And again, I know this is just one of many components uh, that our students and families are thinking about out there. Um, but we're really grateful for your help and insights. And to all those watching tonight, um, please know that if you have more questions about demonstrated interest or other things in the process, such as the re recent SCOTUS decision um, on affirmative action, we are here to help. Um, so uh, please be in touch and enjoy your night. Thank you.